Okay, it's day 26. It was a bit rainy this morning. I was in two minds about watering, but I'm glad I did because the sun keeps coming out. So, um, I'm just on the the second flush of the double flush with this. So, um, yeah, get new growth coming out there. So hopefully, as we get into, uh, hasn't rotted off yet, touch wood. Oh, got a maggot there or something. Yeah, there you can see that. Oh, another one there too, so they're also having a good chomp. Maybe that's part of the secret. They're converting the mushy peas into um, their basic components. Anyway, this, this, this isn't doing absolutely nothing, basically. And I'm thinking, yes, that's what it is. If the newspapers um, say those, if you make the, like, the, the direct equivalent that's somewhat equal to what peat is, in a way, uh, then all your 50-50 peat and sand is somewhat of a, of a negative sort of thing. And that's why the double flush is working, because we've just got a thin crust on the surface. So it partially takes out the, the negatives of the actual cellulose itself, and you know, in, a, in other words, peat itself. So you're getting the benefits of the peat, but without all the negatives sort of thing. I think that's how it's working. So anyway... Because as we see out here, this one's starting to uh, kick off here. The one in the chalk. So I think I have a, a better. See, so there's new growth now starting to come out of the one with the chalk. So. Um, yeah, this is on the second flush, uh, no, the first flush for this one. So uh, it's going to have another flush. So I think I've got an understanding of what chalk does, why it's negative, but there's also, uh, I think, a negative due to the actual cellulose itself, and that's partially why this double flush works, when you have a, a, a thin cr a crust on the surface. So, uh, because this is old peat, and old uh, thing, and... Um, uh, old, some of the negatives of the actual cellulose itself have, have uh, diminished over time and that's why we're getting such good growth from these pots which are uh, solidly full of um, either peat and sand and um, polystyrene or coir and sand and polystyrene and uh, yes, yeah, so maybe the, the, the stuff I had uh, four, four or five seasons ago when I first tried this thing out the problems were due to um, my own spot colour, yeah. Uh, due to the fact I was using um, fresh coir, so maybe you wanted, maybe the uh, all the Greg Gorius Burks out there might want to go and do these things with fresh coir and aged coir, sort of thing. Yeah, say six months or something like that, and so on and so forth with the peat. But I'm going to move on to some more experiments. I'm going to put on. I'm going to put some. Um, yeah, I mean, they just keep getting better and better. When I've got new leaf coming out there. And it's all it is, is it's just this double flush that I'm doing, so, you know. So I've got these other ones in here, and so far they're not dead, so that's good. This one here, that's only a little plant, so we'll be watching this one over here. I may have to put some more plant, you know, bigger plants in there on the edge there, so we'll see how we go. But uh, I'm going to set this thing up uh, on this one here. Yeah might be giving it an idea. So I'm going to set some more plants up uh, here, take these bottles out again, and put you know, probably a, a, one there, you know, a bucket there, a bucket there, and a bucket there sort of thing, and do, do some more. I've got some more fly traps, so uh, I'm, I'm, while I'm waiting for the perps to come in, so because I'm going to put a perp in there, I'm going to put a perp in there, I'm going to put a perp in there. I may end up putting one, if, if they're cheap enough, and there's enough in a pot, like you get two perps in a pot, I can split the perps. I can, you know, have a. I can actually have enough perps to uh, play around. So uh, I've gone to um, double flushing this because it's sand, and single flushing these ones, with, with the idea there's not many nutrients left in it. So I don't want to flush the nutrients out. I want. I just want to freshen the pots up, basically, and that's what I'm working on at the moment. So. Uh, Hopefully, the pine needles here will be settling down and we'll start to see some growth coming from here. And then 
I'll start putting a fly trap in there and we'll see how this, this, this one seems to be adapting now. So I don't know how long, another few days and we might start to see a response coming from that. We keep getting this bronzing though, but I'm getting this lovely, um, this lo lovely look from the iron. So definitely I think the iron is a positive. So um, that's what I'm going to be setting up over there, some various extensions of this uh, iron experiment and we'll see if we get, suddenly you get amazing growth or something and then I'll go from hopefully amazing growth to actually adding in all the bells and whistles from the, the knowledge from what the chalk does and add, it, add that on the back end sort of thing so um, because you know this one with the, with, the, uh, with, the, with the copper in there it's not dead you know what I mean and your argument that oh it's going to kill the plant, you know, I mean that's bloody so. There's so much copper in there. It's just a, so basically what I've done there is made a peat. What the copper does is it stops things. For, it's, it, it's it makes it turns meat into a peat sort of thing. So if I if I blew some meat, I've done the same thing sort of thing. So uh, yeah, so that's another reason why. Um, Peat is a little bit better in that respect to newspaper cellulose because it's got the copper in there which slows this sort of breakdown um, of, the, of, of the cellulose sort of thing. So it diminishes the negative, even though there's negatives there, it's sort of, in a way. That's, that's the idea I'm getting at the moment. This one with the aluminium there, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's pretty, it's, I think it's going to take off, fellas, this is one with the aluminium. So, um, yeah, and all these leaves that were going yellow, some of them are actually starting to come back now. They're like turn the other way. This one down here, I've got my little stick somewhere. It's got some new growth, but I think there's just no guts. There's not enough guts in the, the actual charcoal on its own for little plants, you know what I mean? As I said, I think you have to combine, as I said, I think you have to combine. See there, there's a new growth coming in. I don't know if you can see that. If, if I'm on spot colour, I think I'm on spot colour. Yeah. As I said, I think you have to combine the cellulose with the charcoal because the charcoal contains what's the other nutrients that are in the peat sort of thing. But this one here, here just, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with this one. It's going to go crazy, but from, what, from the experiments I set up over there, I might get an idea of what it is in the peat. I think it's going to be just iron in a way. It's a very, it's a safe form of iron, which I've been talking about for years, you know, having a safe form of iron. Well, now I've got a safe form of copper I've got a safe form of iron, I can make safe nickel, uh, where's the other one, I've got aluminium, I mean I can just set these things up fellas and um, they don't kill the plants now and we can actually, with the double flush, have a very quick gauge of the difference, of what's going on and the differences in a way, so I'm just going to test it out, I said I'm going to set up th uh, three or four pots over there, you know, buckets over there and I think we're going to get a few surprises. <laughs> especially coming from this iron angle, but I'm not going to stop there with the iron angle, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take my knowledge of the, of the chalk here and I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to take my knowledge from the chalk angle here and add it on the back end once I've, if, if it goes the way I think it's going to go, uh, I'm either going to get a very big plant with, you know, ordinary looking but nice red traps um, and not be able to make a blue fly trap or I'm going to be able to make a blue, I don't know, I don't know whether I can actually get a large blue fly trap, I don't know. I'm either going to get a massive plant with no, you know, just ordinary, uh, mainly because look at this. Yeah, I keep gas bagging too much. With 41 seconds on the car, see what that, that new growth, gro that new one's doing? Even though the rhizome <coughs> seems about like falling apart or exploding on itself, that new leaf there. Look at the coloration and the bend on it. You know, I talk about the, a cape, the way the cape does the, the, the fiddle leaf flip, figure of, figure of eight flip, and that tells you you've got really good healthy growth. Apart from the, you know, the bases going nice and pink and red, sort of thing, the, uh, the stipple at bases of the cape. That's a good sign, look at that. If I can get in on that, that's just fantastic for uh, what it is. Okay, well that's, a bit, oh Jesus, I broke my, I broke